Hello guys, this is Dennis Jensen and I'm really excited because this is my second video tutorial that I'm going to do. Today's tutorial is about how you can model a hard surface bicycle. I'm going to show you how you can uh, set up the reference. The first part is to look at the reference, set it up in Maya. And the next part is to get started with the hard surface modeling, how you can do it, what issues that might come up. The next thing is how you can make a tire in Maya with a pattern on top because this can be a bit tricky. So uh, let's just go right into it. I'm gonna try to make it as short as possible. So I hope you will enjoy it and have fun. I'm gonna show you how to model a basic car, a uh, bicycle, sorry. And I found some reference photos. So this is the car. Oh, not the car, the bike, sorry. And there might be a few issues about this. It's hard surface modeling. So I think it's gonna be uh, something new for some guys. And it's very good to learn just to know how to make hard surface stuff. A bit of an issue can be these tires because it got a pattern all around it. So it's kind of a cylinder with a pattern, but we will look into that as well. Um, and I don't think there's any other issues. So I'm just gonna take you through the modeling and hopefully it won't take too long and you can see how to model a very cool boy's bike. I got some more references because when you model something it's very important to have references. So let's just take a look at it. Look at it. Yeah. Um, it looks fine. You can see how this piece goes into the other piece. It looks like he's having fun. Another issue might be this uh, hole in the tire. Yeah, so I suggest we just get started. Hmm. So the first thing I'm going to do is to get the reference photo into Maya. To do that I'm going to my outliner and I'm just going to copy this camera by control duplicate. Then I'm going to copy. And I'm gonna call this. I'm gonna call this cam side side ref. So this is going to be the camera that shows my reference picture. So to make it show the reference picture, I'm gonna go to attribute editor. Mm. Select the camera, of course. Uh, and I'm gonna go to environment, create. Image plane, ta-da! And then I'm gonna find the image. So there it is. Mm. Yeah, I was just gonna check if the portions are wide, and it looks like. They are. So next step is actually just to get started on the modeling. One thing to keep in mind is that now it's on the 0, 0, 0 coordinates. You can change this if you go into image plane. You can see, I think it's no. Yeah. So you got um, these coordinates. You can just change whatever you, whatever you like. So I'm gonna put it a big bit back because otherwise it would be pretty, an pretty annoying if the model is on the same uh, coordinates as the image plane and then I'm actually gonna move it up a bit just so it will be kind of on zero it's just by eye measuring I don't care about that too much oops hmm. Ok, 
Okay, this is uh, a weird error that I'm getting. Anyway, if you hold down space and middle mouse button, you can choose between uh, perspective or what, with what view you want to see it from. And I would like to see it from the side view because my reference is from here. And there's many ways how you can model this. I'll try to go through some of the ways um, just so you guys can learn it. And the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to start with a plane. And this plane is going to be right there. Wow, it's really pretty. So if you right click, you'll get this menu. And this is uh, very important because you can choose vector, face, or edge, or anything you want. So I'm going to choose vector. And then. Hmm. Ah. Okay. I think I got some setting. Read setting on. Mm. So if you double click your move tool, you can see the settings for the move tool. And I got reflection on. I do not want that right now because I'm only. It's it shouldn't uh, be mirrored in the middle. So I want to move each of these individually. So now I'm just gonna move it so it kind of fits this bicycle. It's very important important to keep it low, very low poly. So now I'm gonna. Uh, one very smart thing is that I'm gonna go to edges just so I can click one edge and I'm gonna go to polygons mess edit mess sorry and there should be a uh, extrude I think it's that one yeah so now I ex extrude my face and get another face oh sorry edge so I get another face, and then I can just fit it so it fits. Now I already used this tool, and I got a very nice shortcut to use the last used tool. So if you press G, it will automatically use the last tool you used, in my case, extrude. So <laughs> I will just keep doing this until I get the basic shape of it. Now I might be scaling it in a bit, trying to make it fit a bit more nicely. Actually, uh, these pictures were some just some pictures I stole from uh, Google. Uh, I just searched, so I, do I hope <laughs> nobody will bust me or anything. But it's just for reference, so I don't think they mind. Anyway. Let's go to edge again, press G, G, I think it, I'm in my luck because these tiles are exactly the same, so there won't be too much of Tweaking and stuff to get it to fit. It's a pretty simple model, so I think actually everybody can make this. So you see now it, it got kind of a round edge in the end, and that could could be an issue. But I think I'm just gonna press G and then I'm gonna deal with that later. Not right now. Now it's only about the basic shape. So I don't know. I don't even know how this will look smooth, but I'm guessing it's gonna look pretty okay. I still need uh, this part. Hmm. Okay. Extrude. G. Extrude. Scale it a bit. G. And then I'm 
basically done with the basic shape of this object. So yeah, that's pretty good. Now I would like to see it in perspective. So you can do like space, middle mouse button, and you can choose perspective, but you can also just drag the perspective if you use the middle mouse button in the outliner and drag it over here. And drag it over. Yeah, there you go. You can see what we got so far. It's the wireframe, so if I press 5, you will see the shaded mode. That's all fine. So if I smooth it, yeah. So now if I want to get a hard surface, I need to put a lot of edges, or actually three edges to make a hard surface. Because you could just keep it very low, and you can see if I make This is a box, and it has hard edges here, but in the real world, there will be it will be unnatural to have this hard edge. So, when you do CG, you actually put three edges to make it a little bit smooth, but it will still look as a hard edge, but it will look a bit smooth. So, that's what I'm, what I'm going to do here. Um, as an example, um, I'll just I'll just look at these, and you can see it's a bit round, but it's still kind of a hard edge. So I'm trying. I would really like to get this on my model too, and it should be easy and no problem at all. And now I'm actually noticing that on this picture, this piece actually splits. So it goes here and also goes around the other tire. And this might be interesting to work with. But uh, it won't be a problem. Anyway, let's get moving. So I'm imagining that this tire might be a bit big. So what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to select these uh, vertex and then I'm gonna press B hold B and uh, left mouse button drag so I can choose how much I want to uh, affect this mess it's very nice tool um, and I think it should be around there because you can see this is where the tire starts and all that kind of stuff so I'm gonna drag it out a bit I think like this would be good. And maybe I'm gonna make it a bit more smooth. Yeah. Alright. So next step is I'll press edges and I'm gonna double click on this edge. Because this and I press B so it won't select all of it. So this means that I'm selecting all the border edges around my mesh. So if I extrude this, uh, I will get a thickness on my object so it won't be a plane anymore. So let's just see how this looks if I smooth it. Wow, it doesn't look like a reference at all. So I'm gonna try to make a more hard edge. And there's many ways to do this, but uh, the most easy way is actually to insert edge loop tool. So this means that I'm just, c if I press this edge, I can insert a loop around it. I'm just gonna do that to make a hard edge. So let's see how it looks now. It already looks much better. But not not quite not quite the way I would like it to be. So 